your early game is always clean. I don't have to worry about it. it helps to do the same exact thing every single time. <laughs> that's what that's my plan. The only time that hurts you is if you're playing the same person ten times in a row. That just means you have to outplay them. I, I'm a big fan of that. Like I, I want to be able to have my opponent know exactly what I'm doing and still win. That's what I would ideally do. So was this a 23 max? Yeah, it was 23 and then I went okay. for the um, third goon, I think. Looks like it. Okay, that's no information. That's smart. So I guess they're going for an FD, but they never pulled off of gas. Yeah, I thought it was a two patch, but I guess it just didn't have the numbers for that. Yeah, he could have easily done a two pack here, but man, what is going on? Uh, this was a 1750 Terran, so that's something that yeah, I don't really expect from that. But oh well. Yeah, I, I, they should have pulled off, but they didn't, so I don't know. But anyway, so this is a pretty typical FD then which 23 Nexus tends to struggle with. Um, do you put down oh, a yeah, battery? Oh yeah, Typically you want to put down a battery right away when you see the, the FD push out. You can hold it without, with just three goons, but normally you rely on stutter stepping. Okay, so you do I think it. I do that actually, yeah. yeah. Okay, you have four goons, so this is a pretty late FD as well. Probably on time, yeah. This is really strange to not have a second factory with this. I think with the second factory, I just would have straight up died. Because <clears throat> the bunker was huge for solidifying that position. Yeah, so. I guess the first thing with five goons, you could have been pressuring while it was being built. I guess you probably had four at the time, but four in a bunker. Well, four in a battery, yeah. Yeah. Right. Um, but I did I see the mine, the and mine, that made me a little concerned. That's true. Um, you can. Oh, you got it, actually. Maybe you didn't notice, but you did get the mine. So here, like, yeah, you could be pressuring. If you were pressuring right now, I mean, the bunker might That'd get up, but you'd bad. be eating all these marines. So you'd either eat the marines or you'd eat the tank, one or the other. So that's one thing. Um, you definitely need a third gate at this point, because no matter what, you're going to need it versus this. Um, that makes sense. Because you can't get a third, so might as well. Um, I, I noticed that you usually only get two gates. I really think that three is more appropriate, like as a default. I only get two gates if it's a Rax FE. Because it's uh, okay. it's really hard to defend the three tank push unless you do that. Unless you get three gates. And stuff like this. But definitely if the, if they're if they have some kind of expansion then you might be able to get away with two gates just depending on positions and micro and things like that, but if they're not taking a natural, then you always want to get a third gateway at the same yeah. time as the second. Oh, okay. So that was about my next question. Yeah. Yeah. So if you can, had... Okay, so that delays like my tech and stuff just a little bit, but if they're not expanding, it's a lot better. Exactly. Because you're so far ahead on eco that you can do it. It doesn't hurt anything. So, like, right now, in theory, if you had a third gate, you could make a shuttle right now and three zealots. And then this is, like, White nothing. Cow. This is just... Uh, it's it's a blip on the radar, right? Like, that it's like, not an issue. Yeah, and then the game's just over. <clears throat> right. Alright. So that's... In hindsight, if you had done it that way, then, you know, you could have had one ops and then a shuttle and three zealots. And then he's speeding on a pylon and a battery. By the time he hits your nexus, you've got a shuttle with two zealots. Still one factory. 
That eBay was so annoying. Oh yeah. Like right, right here. I mean, you're seeing. Oh, I'm trying to take it. Um, you can just sit until he's beating on your nexus or your probes. That's the only time you really have to act. And in the meantime, getting a shuttle and three zealots is, or four if you had a fourth gate, is really appropriate. I mean, it's, that's the easiest way to break out is to get a shuttle because either they'll have a turret or two and you have to drop it back here or they won't. If they have one turret, you can fly right over. It doesn't matter. But the zealots just being on this side mean your goons can run forward and not get clumped like this. Yeah, and then if the tank has to shoot one direction, it takes longer for it to shoot the next shot. Yep. Like, I like the power pole. I mean, I like everything you're doing, except, um... It would have been strong to shot on. Yeah. Especially with the uh, couple of mines that are lying around. Yeah, oh yeah. But here, I mean, you're behind. But, I mean, it's playable. Well, the issue is I didn't fully break out. Ah, uh, okay. If I had broken out, I think it would have been a bit of a different game. But you I think should here. With this, these games, right? Yeah. Should be able to break out here. I mean, he has no more tanks, so you can just... You should be able to break out right now. Like, three, three goons can kill that SCV and kill the bunker easily right now, as well. I think by the time I actually move over. Okay. Yeah, I tried to get that, gotcha. but that's rough for me. Yeah, that's rough. <laughs> yeah, this I... is where the game kind of like continues to get rough and worse. Okay, so I think one thing. I mentioned it a little bit, but like. Let's go back a little bit further. So, like. For one, this, the ideal breakout, I think, would obviously, ignoring the shuttle, so if you just had goons, you want to have as wide of an arc as possible going through this choke. So yeah. right now, your only available space is this right here. So if you wanted to break out, all of your goons have to go through here, which means they're either spread out, so you have like mm -hmm. a row and a row, and then they won't take as much splash, but they take longer to start engaging or you have just a giant clump which takes massive splash from mines and tanks so this battery is actually is in kind a bad of in spot. the way um, I mean it's if it was a little bit more forward it'd probably be a little bit better um, but I think the, the other thing to consider is you could just throw some goons down here as well so that you have like three goons down here and the rest up here so that it's at least somewhat of an arc so that right when this pylon goes down you can rush out if that's the right time or um or you can wait yeah, until the battery's dead even and that then, pylon that's coming in there is also in the way a little bit with exactly. that as well yep it's like and and you don't have to engage yet he, he's got one tank and he's just reinforcing with vultures so Ooh, that's that would have been a good pickup. Oh, it's such a shame you guys didn't shoot. <laughs> I think I tried to. Yeah, oh, no. it's he did. I can tell. I moved him. That's for sure. Yeah. So like sitting here is what you should be doing, and you should like you can wait until this pylon is dead, and even you can even wait for the battery to die if you want, and just mass up. Because, like, you have time. You're building, you, you should be building off of three gates and uh, a robo, and he's building off of, at most, two factories. So that's advantageous for you. He obviously can build more crap in front of it and be annoying, but even then, it's still advantageous to wait, I think. Well, in that situation, it's advantageous to grab a shuttle, like yes. we just discussed earlier. Right. Yeah. But even or if even you don't, here. it's still letting him kill this pylon and letting him kill this battery. You you are producing three goons at a time, and he's making, I mean, you don't know it at the time, but he's making one tank at a time. So that obviously... Well, even if it's, 
Even if it was two factories, he's probably still producing one tank at a time. Yeah. Off one base. Yeah, most likely. So you can, you can just wait. I mean, the the issue. I mean, you did well here to like almost break out, and I think if you were a little more diligent, bring these ones down a little bit faster, you could have broken out right now. But then it's like you piecemealed a little bit. So like you went in, you did some damage, and you backed up. But yeah, rather than just break it and right. So if you when his stuff committed comes in, right I there, you kill the in, you kill I the SCV, you kill the bunker, and without the bunker, it's it's over. And then here you throw some more units in, even though there's you know two more zealots back here. If those two zealots were in the fight. You would have cleaned this up. And, and again, there's there's no clock because it's five gates versus two factories. So you could have sat, let him siege your battery, wait till he pushes up a little more, and then gone with another full round of units. So I think it's just the yeah, gate. Yeah, just crush it, walk across the map, and win. Yeah, it's just the patience. I mean, that's. That's the one of the hardest parts of Brood War is to remember when you are, when time is on your side or not on your side. And in this situation, time is on your side because of your extra production. Well, part of it is I'm not really used to seeing this kind of situation yeah. much either. So it's like not really knowing the right answer. Sure. Yeah. Yep. Cool. Yep. But yeah, I mean, at this point, because of the, the lack of pro production, it, it is over at this point. If you were producing probes this whole time, then, I mean, it's it's not looking good, but it's still a game. But, yeah. Oh yeah, by the time <laughs> I actually break out, this game is like, not actually. That bunker good. is amazing. <laughs> anyway. Um, yeah, that bunker is the bane of my life. I, I don't think there's uh, any reason to continue but I mean um, really it's with this game it was more this situation rather like the follow up at this point doesn't matter it's, it's like right. everything before it was what matters yeah yep so yeah I think I mean I've, I've said it all I don't think I need to recap it but yeah I mean it's just a snowball it's like one more unit in the right spot would have done it kind of a game but um, yeah if I had that third um third gateway I would have won it then because yeah. I probably would have broken out in that first push right with like two to three more goons and uh, yeah ideally or a shuttle because I have the money for that. plus that like you, you had the time to get a shuttle and three zealots and then I think that's the time just sit back like you are here until you have a shuttle and three zealots and then go with the shuttle and your goons I think that's the right time in this exact situation that makes sense too, because that also will clear the mines as well onto them rather than onto me. And again, your clock is when he starts to siege your nexus, so you have time because of the crap in front to get that. So, um, and, and that's probably exactly the amount of time that you have. So, I think that's the way to go. Three. Three gates, and then if he does a container like this, immediately get a shuttle and three zealots, and then go right when you have that. That's that's probably the good summary. And then the three gates is standard. Yeah, three gates is is very typical. Um, like I said, two gates is only if they do a fast expand of some sort, and typically only if they do a rax fe or a refinery fe. Oh, okay. So, if they do a factory fe, you usually still get three gates. But. Okay, but if they get a Rax FB, then that's... Because my main difference with Rax FB is I just get a faster Nexus for a third Nexus. But other than that, everything else usually stays about the same. So, I've actually had a long conversation with CRVT about that, and the almost everybody is doing bunker expands of some flavor in TVP. So, the the generally accepted convention is that if they go Rax FE, um, a 28 Nexus is better than a 23 Nexus, surprisingly, um, because of the goons. So the damage, the time that you can beat on a bunker is so long against Rax FE that it actually makes it worth it 
to try to constantly produce dragoons. So you. Well, that makes sense because it. I, th I don't remember who did the math, but it was something like just under a hundred minerals a minute that they lose per okay. goon hitting their their or their uh, bunker. Okay. Well, there's that, and also, if once you get three goons, you can two shot SCVs. So you and you should. You should dive forward, snipe an SCV, run back, beat on it again, run forward, snipe an SCV, run back, and beat on it again. So you can usually get around three SCV kills as well. So you want to rush to three Dragoons as fast as possible. So that's either a, doing a 28 next, or you do a 23 next, and then follow up with the, the Goon instead of the two probes. Which I, I think that's probably a wash. I mean, the Goon or the, three, the two probes... I don't know which, what's correct, but... Um. So, if I can, I prefer the two probes, mainly yep. because the robo is about 15 seconds faster. Okay. On average. It's like 10 to 15. Okay. Um, I actually remembered what, what CRVT recommended. He, he recommended doing the two probes, but then when the, when the pylon finishes at 25 supply, mm -hmm. you get a goon first, and then your robo. And that lets you have your third... It lets you have almost constant probes, but it also lets you have your third goon in a good time to start sniping SCVs. Okay, and it is a little bit... Well, it's not necessarily safer because you're not under any threat, but it lets you do more damage, and you don't really have to look at the tech that quickly because it's slower. True, exactly. Yep. Okay, I see the idea. Yep. And then refinery FE, which I don't know if you even look for the difference because i didn't until i had that conversation um there, there's a rax fe that gets to the refinery right before the cc that one actually gets their tank count up much faster um so you do the same reaction as um as rax fe except you have to get three gates instead of two because that one the the two factory push the two machine shop push is mm -hmm much much Super faster deadly. so you have to get the three gates against that and then the third flavor is the factory bunker expand so if you see so if they go factory first and then a bunker expand so not not a siege expand or an fd but a bunker factory expand versus that you can actually cut goon and you want to get your nexus up as fast as possible so you can cut your goon and you can even cut range if you want um, to get your nexus up faster which feels counterintuitive because they have a factory. That's, well, if but, they're going to push, you still have some enough time to get everything in place because it'll be slower. Right, and you can't beat on the bunker because because they have the tank to exactly. beat you back. So you can cancel the second goon, and I I don't cancel the range. I I keep range, but you can optionally also um, cancel range just to get your nexus up ASAP. Yeah, so usually what I see in my games is Rax FE, which is less yeah. common. Um, two Factory, which is fairly common. FD is very rare, but it does happen like this. Um, but most common is the um, Factory and then Expand. Like a, a Bunker or a Siege Expand? Uh, Both, bunker. probably. Bunker, okay. And Siege, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it's a good mix right now. I think uh, the higher you get, the more you see the racks and refinery FEs. But I see yeah, all I think of them. I see them. It's really common to see all of them, to be honest. Yeah, I think the only person that does those to me is uh, Pato. Okay, yeah, because he's, he's, he's uh, A rank, I think. So. Yeah, I've only ever come close to beating him once. Okay. Was it rough? He's beaten me like 20 times. Nice. I haven't played him yet. <laughs> He's good. Yeah, I know he's good. But I'd yeah. like to. But. Okay. Anything else? Or so I don't really have any replays for okay. it, but I wanted to go over like um, PVZ a little bit. Okay. So the standard build order that I'm using is the plus one plus one that you made a video for. Okay. And then a couple adaptations here or there based on what the Zerg is doing. 
So if I don't see Spire with the first uh, Corsair, I'll cut the second one and then go into the gateways and get all that stuff quicker. Okay. But if I do see three hatch um, Spire into five hatch Hydra, you sh for some reason I hit the timing at like with my zealots arriving in at the right time, but it, t it doesn't seem to uh, do all that much damage usually. So it's kind of weird. I mean, so, so you're saying you you hit the seven thirty and they just have enough hydras typically to make. Well, it I also cool. seem to have one fewer zealot. Okay. So I usually only have like six zealots. Okay. But I'm also getting my second gas earlier. There's quite a oh, few sure, probe cuts in the build actually. That... Yeah, that's probably what I'm missing. Yeah, it's in in the video I go through it a little bit. You you actually prioritize corsairs and tech and then zealots and then probes. Like probes are actually like the fourth most important thing in it. Um, it's surprising. It's but... counterintuitive for me. Right, but the 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 thing that like pulls it in is the fact that you have specific you have a specific amount of gas, and you have specific buildings that can produce the zealots and the sayers, so that mm -hmm. is metered just right, so that you can almost always produce probes. So that's kind of yeah. the the like reason that it's acceptable. But um, the key timing that I've realized is actually at thirty supply for me, like the. Uh, it, it's the last like specific supply count that I I know is like a key, like hard crit a like critical yeah power. exactly a, a hard event that occurs at a specific supply. So like, um, I start my stargate and then at twenty I make yeah. two more probes and then on thirty I actually go gas and then I have a, a probe cut here. So I get gas and then a 30 pylon. Okay, so I'm getting a pylon on 32. That's probably where it is. And so I'm cutting probes right now. I get my plus one and then I start my zealot and then I resume probes. So that's, I mean, it's a small cut, but um, it lets you get out like half of a zealot at that point, as well as you, you miss a supply block here so um, if you don't do that little cut you're always supply blocked and then actually, yeah I get that as well yeah and I always end up in that situation and the other thing is there's typically a, a small cut at 40 as well um, because you need to um, get this pylon get on you get that pylon oh, up okay. so your corsairs aren't cut either yeah, that happens to me a lot as well. Yeah. Okay, so it's basically those two probe cuts. Yeah, I think for the most part, uh, anything after this is just it's the constant fluid. probes, but uh, maybe there's a, a one here and there that's a little bit delayed. There's one right there. I, my second gateway timing varies quite a bit, but th I think those two are the big ones, and that, that might help you quite a bit. I actually cut probes oh, maybe a little too hard because I usually have eight zealots. <laughs> um, but I think those two are pretty crucial compared to the, the rest. So that and might so help. I mean, it's just one zealot though, so you should still be doing fairly good damage if you're hitting at 7.30 or they're over-preparing one or the other. Yeah, so... What I'm also doing is I'm also poking with the um, first two zealots a lot, okay. just to try to like force production and uh, walk away. Mm -hmm. Normally I'm good with that, but sometimes they end up if they have like wings to beat or something, they end up sniping one or both of them. And at that point, is it even still worth it to do the 7:30 timing? It's that's like a quarter of the zealot count. It's it's still okay because you can always run away. Mm, speed. Yeah. So you should still do it, but not expect to do the damage. I mean, 
you should never expect to do damage with the 730 timing. Like it's, if the Zerg is doing their job right, you should do very little damage, if any. So like, take damage if you can, but if they're fully defended, just run back home, it's fine. So yeah, you should always do the push out, even if you have five, but. Okay, because um, that at least forces them to do something other than drone. Right, exactly. You're just keeping them honest. It's it's the same reason that you're doing the two zealot push out. It's let's mm -hmm. force a couple lings. Well, your seven thirty timing is let's force a bunch of hydras and maybe a sunk or two. It's the same idea, but it it's such a powerful timing that you often can do damage because it's so strong and Zerg has to respect it. But if they don't, then that means that they've like if you go there and it's like so many hydras that you can never do any damage, then that means you've effectively killed drones because they made hydras. So you just run back yeah. home, you've killed quote unquote drones. So it's fine. Yeah. Usually when it does work for me, I, it's not the zealots that do that damage, it's the corsairs. Mm -hmm. it, I always find that the zealots do a lot, but then the corsairs kind of seal it, you know? Like, yeah. I had like two practice games last night that where the Corsairs ended up just straight up winning the game. Yeah. That's always nice. Didn't end it right there, but they basically won the game. Mm -hmm. Yeah, another thing when you mentioned the two zealot push out, um I I pref I've I've been preferring pushing with three actually, because Zergs have most Zergs follow a build that has a built-in timing that they go up to sixlings. In which case, two zealots... I mean, two zealots can kill sixlings, but it's fairly close, and they can just make, like, one more set of lings or, like, pull drones or whatever, and it's not that big of a deal to deal with two zealots. Um, unless they're out of position, obviously. But three zealots, they don't... There's no timing built into the, the Zerg builds that say make 10 zerglings or whatever so g pushing with three zealots is usually a little bit uh, a little bit stronger yeah, because they take have out, to react more and then if they just blindly send the links you can take out all six links but if you're three zealots alive just poke in yeah. make force them to build like another eight links and there's your drone kills right and, yeah exactly if it's if you push with two and they react that you get like one more set of links. If they don't react, then you barely kill the links and you're left with one zealot and it's not a big deal. If you push yeah, with, with three and they see it, then you force like eight links. If they don't see it, then you fucking kill them. Because it's three, three zealots <laughs> against six links and you, they just lose the game. Like, it's actually I think the three zealot push out is, is really strong. Okay, so. so I'll give that a shot. To three Zella followed up with seven thirty, and then there's another one around like ten thirty or eleven with like four to six Templar. Yeah, that one I find really hard, like to know. So when do it's I? Because without the goons, if they get yeah. if they anticipate it, they can just wipe you, and there's nothing you can do. Yeah, it it's it takes a lot of control because if they go Muta, you have to have your Sayers in exactly the right spot. And if they go Hydra, then you have to storm in the right clumps and keep, you know, you have to engage them in the proper areas that you don't have a giant surround because then your storms aren't effective. But it's, it's difficult to execute that specific timing. And so I, I haven't experimented with it much. I'm starting to more now. Um, but Personally, until now, I've been just focusing on the 7.30 and the 12-minute timings. Okay. So. And those two probe cuts should make a huge difference for me. Yeah, it's those are pretty critical. Yeah. <clears throat> so. um, I will be right back. One second.
I guess I should have asked if you had anything else before I walked away. There we go, I'm unmuted. Nice. Yeah, so I just checked one of my replays and I can see the exact timing. It was at 29 supply because I lost the scouting right. probe. But I had the 100 100 for the uh, plus one, but I got the two probes instead. Okay. And that was a big deal. Okay. Well, good. Yeah. I, uh, I love finding those tiny little timings like that that make everything flow much better. Well, the end result is like that couple of seconds turns into minutes and that couple of minutes turns into wins and losses. Mm -hmm. Exactly. But I'm also seeing this six links that you're talking about and my two zealots just totally get wiped. Okay. <laughs> two zealots should just barely win that. But it does come, I think it does come down to micro. And if they have speed or not. Uh, there was speed. Okay, yeah. He did end up actually going update. But there were only six in the fight. Okay. okay. Yeah. Yeah, I've I've been playing around with three and five. Both, both of and those are... And then there's that 42 of 42 good. supply block. Yeah, I think those probe cuts totally changed the game. Good. 30 and 40. That's easy to remember. Yep. So then the other thing, though, is if when they s skip the uh, Spire, mm -hmm. you don't want to continue the Corsair production because then they can just roll you with Hydras. But so, in theory, wouldn't the Corsair production be really strong so long as they don't roll you with Hydras? <laughs> Uh, yes and no. So, you you can go up. You can stop at one if you want. That's totally legitimate and an acceptable way to play. You just have to be and careful to watch for a spire later. But you can well, also if you stop go at one. You, you cancel plus one, right? Yes. Yep. Yeah. Yeah. So you can stop at one Corsair with no plus one error. And that's totally fine as long as you're looking for the Spire or later get a Dark Archon. That's a totally fine way to play. The other way is to go up to three Sayers with plus one. And you can totally play that way as well. Which means that you're, it's extremely unlikely that they'll switch to Mutas. And if they do, you're well prepared to handle it. Um, yeah, and the Dark Archon is useful in general, uh, even against Hydras, because Maelstrom plus Storm is pretty strong. Yeah, yeah, it's it's not as efficient as not getting one, but it's it's more robust because it's so effective against the Mutas. But um, you can go up to three Corsairs with plus one. I I would never go more than that. Um, because it, it really does eat into your ground army considerably because of the delay in storm. And so what, what happens is if you keep making Corsairs, and, and this is true of going up to three with plus one, um, the more you spend on air, the more damage you have to get done versus overlords because your their hydra timing is gonna be earlier than your storm timing because you're spending gas on Corsairs and not your other tech. So yeah. you have to add more cannons, which then delays your gates, which then delays everything. So in order to even it out, if you do go Corsairs, you have to get a lot of Overlord kills to delay their push. But it's really hard because they're going Hydras, so... They can just, if a smart Zerg player is just going to sit with their overlords over each base and their hydras over each base, and then when they're ready to go out, they leave a handful behind and just go kill you. So it, it makes it really hard. It, it's harder to play going Corsair versus no Spire. I think it's, 
I think like at a pro level, it's still good because their, well, their multitask is to... so good that they can still yeah. deal damage. But at our level, it's there's it's nothing harder. wrong with stopping at one or three. I, I think any anywhere between one Corsair and three with plus one air is all acceptable. Um, you just have to remember that your storm is super late if you get them and you need to rely on cannons more than you typically would. Well, the other thing with that as well is you also can get a better sense of how many hydras they're really making True. if you're running around with it. But you can do that with one or three, so long as it doesn't get sniped. Right, it's it's easier with three because the damage will spread, but e even then, it's, it's hard to count hydras. I mean, it's because they're spread out and they usually have them in three or four different places it's it's pretty difficult to actually get a good count but you can you can get a general feel yeah okay but but if they go no no spire the normal 630 um templar archives is late and that's that's they will kill you if you don't add a significant amount of cannons or they okay. can they, they don't have to but a smart zerg will yeah that yeah, that's happened to me before. I think it was Return that did that to me. It just walked okay. into my base and I had no answer. Yep. I had like five Corsairs and seven Zealots and nothing. Yep. Exactly. Yeah, because the only reason you need five Corsairs in the first place is to deal with the Scourge. Right. Exactly. Because otherwise they can just make six Scourge and wipe out all three of them. Exactly. That, that's kind of the... There's no real break point versus Hydras, but if you have three plus one Sayers, they they melt Overlords pretty pretty well on their own. And you're two yeah, Corsairs one. away from being able to fight Scourge. So if they do go into Spire, you're, you don't have to scout it like instantly. If you scout it relatively late, you're still safe because you just make two more Corsairs and there you go. Well, it also mentally probably discourages. Yeah, maybe. Yeah, it definitely does discourage the spire play. They they still can. I mean, I've I've had five plus one corsairs and they eat all of my templar anyway because you just kill templar so fast. So it, sometimes it just doesn't matter. Like they'll kill them no matter what, but um, it does act as a somewhat of a deterrent. Yeah. I think I can work with that. I see we have a silent person in here as well. We do. You have a reflect? T toss. Hello. <clears throat> I'm just chilling, man. I'm good. Okay. Well, I mean, we can practice if you want, or do I hit B. To, I hit B today. Nice. Wait, hey, nice. Nice. I'm not I see it. B. I'm C rank currently. I should be coaching you, Crane. What's going on here? That's true. I'm, I'm totally kidding. <laughs> it's hard right now, man. The ladder is tough, dude. It's not forgiving, right? No. Well, oh, I know. So this is my this is my B games, right? Like, so I'm like, I was at. Seven, so seven. All you have to do is hit 1751, right? But I was at yep. like 1745. Then I play a 2000 Protoss, lose. Then I was at like 1740. I, I win my game. Then I'm like two points away. They put me up against a top B player. I lose. It's just like fucking mm -hmm. damn ladder, man. <laughs> well, that's what happened to me as well. I hit 1738. And then they put me up against two Bs and then an A all in a row and the next thing I know I'm tilted and headed straight for D. I have a theory question I want to talk with you though, Crane. Sure. Like I, I know I've always asked you this and we keep you and I keep going back and forth, back and forth with it. 
So, like, the only thing that I struggle with right now, like, that, that I just, like, I, I do a build and I just auto-lose if they do it as FD. Like, if I 23 Nexus. Because I 23 mm -hmm. Nexus almost every game. <clears throat> so, I want to theory this with you. What do you think of, like, it, so if we scout and we see a lot of Marines, what do you think of 23 Pylon, 23 Goon, we're now at 25 Supply, and then go 25 Gateway, 26 robo and then we can build two goons at a time quickly you get what i'm saying because i mean for fd specifically i think it holds two fact too well for fd specifically that's i think that will be too late i mean the the game that sarah showed here it was actually an fd um versus 23 next i think uh no, no, so what you do is you, instead of getting your two probes, you build a goon, right. but then you build a 25 gateway. So you see how he's not building gateways until 29? Right. So you would have two more goons out before these marines hit your base. Let's see how that works out. So right now you're building, instead of these probes that you're about to build... Right, he's, make, he's making the goon. Okay, he's making the goon. And then now you're putting a gateway right now would be gateway now, now. so yep. i don't actually know the full time it takes to make a gateway but um so i was at 408 or something how long does it take to make a gateway i'm curious to see if it actually would make it in time brood oops it is curious the brood idea that we gateway. had was um so you skipped the probe serif there yeah, I skipped the probe too because I didn't see a fast expand, and I yep. thought it was going to be a two fact actually. Yep. Sure should have been. <laughs> <laughs> it would have. Did you lose? Did you lose to it? The FD? Did it kill you? It didn't outright kill me, but the contain eventually did. So yeah, it's, it's just a fucking hard counter to our build, man. So it's <laughs> it's thirty eight seconds. So if it started at like. 410, it should be 448 when it finishes. What, the gateway? Yeah. So your gate would finish... Now. Now-ish. Yep, and then and your then, goons take yeah, how long? It would It would make it. Yep. I mean, it'd barely make it, but it would make it. But you would have it, two yeah. extra goons, you get yep. what I'm saying? So, That's true. So, but so I'm one... Because five goons holds this shit. Four goons holds this shit. But what? But how much better is five? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> I get what you're 20%. saying. Yes, that, that is true. But I guess what are we giving up? I think is the question. We're giving up two probes. Well, we're giving up the robo timing as well. No, because you're getting robo at 26. So you're you're literally so the normal build is um, robo at 25. You're just getting it one supply later. You're already cutting the probes anyways. So you're just getting it one supply later and you're kind of cutting half of a probe and then you're building probes again. So they're they're delaying their CC for so long, I don't think it puts us behind. Yeah, that makes sense. It's just my theory. I'm making this shit up myself, right? You know what I mean? I'm just... Yeah. It's so just, I like Crane's option a little bit more in my head, though. Because this... When you get the... Robo that couple seconds faster, that means you have the obs out that much faster for the uh, mines. And then the idea was to get a second gateway right here to make it up to three gates. And then that constant production, you just kind of like hold until you have to push and then break it. Yeah. yeah so if you play against a good player, I don't know who this guy is, but they'll take, they'll kill your Nexus if you don't have like what you need. You know what I mean? Your Nexus dies if you don't have enough, I feel. You certainly are delaying the Robo. I mean, how much? I mean, it's you're delaying it by 150 minerals compared to if you went straight for it like this. Yeah, um, and in my head, I'm already delaying it to get this um, third goon out as well. <laughs> True. A little bit, yeah. So, I mean, I have it's, the for it long before I, I was actually... I think you're there. right that it would help you hold sure um but i i don't know if you need it right so i think i think if if you're struggling to defend it i agree that it would help you to defend 
Well, the real question is, this is assuming that you know it's going to be an FD. If it's a two- No, but I'm saying it, the, my build holds the two fact too. The build okay. that I'm talking about, I think will hold both. Yeah. It seems legit, yeah. I mean, it, if it, if it is indeed a FD, and I've only gotten to do it once on the ladder, um, and, and, we, it, and I crushed him with a two-fac. But I don't, you know what I'm saying? Like, I need to yeah. play, like, a top-tier dude sure. doing it. I have no idea. Well, <laughs> top-tier player will kill you with Marines. Fucking one factory. Like yeah. um, but, I mean, I, I think this this holds. I mean, this should hold here as well. But, yeah, you'd have a fifth goon here, and it would... Well, I also feel like most players would. aren't committing a bunker there as well. No. Yeah, in this scenario, I mean, like we said, the, the key is the shuttle, which means that you would want the robo to be earlier, so you get the shuttle on time. But, um, yeah, I mean, I, it seems reasonable, and I think if the Terran was going for, like, I'm going to make a tank, make one, make the Marines make one tank, and then make, like, two vultures, and then uh, CC, you would be probably more even than you would be in a, in a standard 23 Nexus. But I don't think it's, I don't think it's the end of the world. I mean, you can, you can come back from it, sure. Like even here, we're behind on probes. You'd be even more behind. I actually don't know if you've been Well, I'm only behind because I cut well. probes and he didn't cut the... Um, right. Yeah, but we're, we're proposing an even. Force. Yeah, but we're still in a we're still in a better spot because you're mining second next your 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 probes yeah your probes are split so you have more efficient mining. Yeah, yeah I, I I think you are totally right that it's ex an acceptable position to be in. I think that's totally true, but it's less ahead than you would be if you went for the standard follow up, which yeah. you know, at our level, surviving is half the battle. Right, it's most of the battle. <laughs> so it's three quarters of the battle, it's man. Totally, because uh, the players aren't they're them themselves aren't that good to transition perfectly. You know what right. I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I'm. Well, I had another thought I'm as sure. well. With these four goons, if he had gone straight up and I had held at the um, ramp, then I should I should have probably had them positioned over there until he forced me to move back. Yeah, you you definitely want to be aggressive versus this with the four goons. Well, I mean, you have to be. Uh, careful to not let a vulture in, but you can certainly be up here. Well, yeah, because those bridges because are so hard FD. to cross. But those bridges are so hard to cross for for yeah. him too. Yep. That you could get extra shots. You could get so much damage here if you were positioned right here. Yeah. But and then also if it was a two fact, then stuff. I guess if even if it's a two fact, you still want to fight him here if he's going across here. But not if he's pushing this way. So I think you can position here. Yeah, he kind of did this weird thing where he pushed both yeah. ways. <laughs> yeah. I think you can be here and just be careful now. about them coming down this way and then back up if you need to. But yeah, versus an FD, you certainly want to meet them. And I'll, I'll, of course, uh, an FD would push out a little bit later anyway. I don't know exact timings, but... Um, Two fact would not push right here. It would push out slightly later, typically. But, yeah, I mean, four goons is enough. Four goons in a battery is enough, but five goons in a battery is definitely is then definitely enough. So yeah, I, I think it's legit. I want to try to hold in the with the standard build. Me I, too. I mean, I would like to twenty nine. Your 30 supply triple gate, right? But it's like, I don't know, man. I feel like it has to be altered when they do it. I don't know. I've been getting screwed, so I've given up trying to do it. Well, in reality, if, if you know for a fact that's what they're doing, and you, it doesn't seem like that bad of an idea to slightly over-prepare for it. Yep. I'm, but Bonus even says, like, if you really know where it's coming early, like, you say you were probe scouted, like, after gate or something, and you knew it was coming, like, don't even build the Nexus. That's what he says. He says, go Reaver. Yeah. <laughs> and that's what he, he and I, to me, that's insane. I would never do that. But, because I don't have his control, like, I would rather have the Nexus. But well, like, what, what he would, would do about. is he would stay one base, is what he said. He wouldn't even build the Nexus yeah. if he knew it was coming. Like, if he said he was, like, map hack enabled, you know it's coming, 
you you don't even build the nexus in other words that's the hard counter yeah i i think that's pretty well, it's also upon with really high level control. players it's just broken so good what's up i was just saying that with Bonif, that makes more much more sense because his reaver control is so oh. strong oh yeah he's out of this world yeah. like him and i did um the 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 test map where you mm -hmm. you know have e equal armies right <laughs> we did it for about an hour right like just over and over reaver control we have both have 12 goons two reavers and a shuttle and i think every single time he was walking away with like eight goons still alive mm -hmm. like my army's dead <laughs> oh, yeah. it's insane yeah i did that with leash for a couple hours the other week and it was pretty even yeah which is nice but like i did it with um Master Ray, who made that, and yeah, that's the that's like the map we were games. using, Master Ray's map. Yeah, it's a great map. At some point, I want to grab a Terran and practice engagements on there. I'm sorry to deter your guys' session. It was just theory, thinking things. So oh, you guys so asked. That's the whole point of the session. Here. I was basically out of, out yeah, of my section of it. And you may know this, Crane, because you—I mean, you're DM and you play, and you play with so many good guys, man. Like, dude, the, I, to me, it was like eye-opening of how a, an even army, how one-sided it, it could be. <laughs> like, no, no, I, like it, it was—he opened my eyes to a whole new oh, yeah. reality. I didn't even like. I'm a StarCraft two player, man. So I'm coming back. Like I'm going reverse, right? So to me, that shit doesn't exist in StarCraft two. Like, right. So that that was that just. Was I know that sounds silly, and it's stuff good. stuff you probably know already. But it was so eye opening to see how he was same army. He's just mm -hmm. walking away with still the whole army, pretty much. <laughs> that's that's like that's why Brood War is so interesting, Hard. is because it doesn't require like fancy spells and things in order to make uh, a skill gap it just it feels like halfway in between like a total war type game where you have a giant army and they you just like strategize and like a super like a starcraft 2 where it's like specific abilities that have to be timed and positioned correctly like you have you have to control your dumbass army in order to make it do normal shit and the better you are at that the more effective your army is by such an insane margin and it's yeah. just it's not flashy it's not like oh my god he did such this this amazing micro trick but it's there it's just consistent and no but i'm saying you and i could watch i mean you may your, your knowledge may be above mine for whatever but what i'm trying to say is we could watch him stream and you're not really realizing how until you right. face it is what i'm saying like go against a, a pro in micro battle and and you will yeah. just understand that it is insane yeah like, that's all i want to say that's all yeah, I that's what i'm saying too yeah <laughs> it's insane oh yeah and it's it's a lot of subtle things too that you don't even notice like uh, like instead of making an arc exactly like this they make it like this or something like that like just just one click and it's like that's the difference. That's the difference. Yep. That one. And they have two goons that live yeah. that you wouldn't have. You yeah. know what I mean? Exactly. Well, there was actually a conversation in the CPL channel earlier today mm. about um, the differences in when pros do like worker drills, and mm -hmm. they individually select units to attack move during the drill, rather than all of them all at once, hmm. to try to um, keep the whatever they're drilling glitched out as long as possible okay yeah i never noticed that I, it, they're well they're not doing it individually but like section by section right. i think okay yeah and it makes sense but at the same time that's just insane yeah well you've played as much as they have Yeah, that's all I well, got. Okay. Well, 
if that's it, I think I need to do some DSL laddering. <laughs> Get my sad, sad MMR up a little bit. You're like, a, right now? you're like a 1952k player, Crane. What are you doing in so, C? What happened? So, here's here's the deal. Let's, let's... And I don't mean to ask that as an so asshole thing. Current... It's, more like, it's more like you're fucking good. Why are you in C? This is my current account. And this one is the account before the crash. <laughs> Yeah, so did you just start and doing dumb shit? This account is during the last crash, and I abandoned it. No, I, I just, I, I, ha I go in cycles, and I think I'm starting to understand it a little bit. Um, I think it. What happens is I approach A, and I'm at the point where like my builds are clean, and I've advanced past thinking about my builds. And I'm thinking about what my opponent's doing and micro and, you know, the, the optimizations. And then I have real life stuff get in the way and I don't play enough and I'm tired and whatever else. And I play and I'm still focusing on that like level two stuff, but my builds atrophy. So then everything, all of my base crumbles while I'm trying to focus on the next level and I don't return to focusing on my basics in an appropriate amount of time so like now I'm refocusing on my basics again and I'm like relearning how to hit my builds and the basic reactions and then I'll build up to A again and then it'll all start over again <laughs> Yeah, I think it's crazy but, but it's like to me that and maybe you, you'll disagree but to me it proves that like mid high c is actually good enough to where if you're not playing right you'll lose oh it's insane <laughs> right? like right? i've had so many games against like 1700 1600 level players that their builds are crisp and their macro is great and it's all decision making at that point yeah like and that wasn't always true i mean i i've played since the beginning of uh, Remastered, and B-rank players were, like, garbage at some point. <laughs> like, they, there's some really bad B-level players, but now it's like, everybody has clean builds. Like, yeah. from the bottom to the top, it's it's amazing. It's how it feels, man. And I say that, and I mean, you, we could pull up any rep of any B-level player and make fun of them, because they've got so many mistakes, but it's like, y you can see the, the resemblance of the appropriate build in every right. player C level and above. Yep. It's it's amazing. That beats the MMR hell though. So so and then I have to throw this out before I let you guys go. So Artosis would say if you play this game you should be B minimum, otherwise you're trash and then he ladders and gets put into yeah. like B <laughs> yep. I'm well, convinced he says stuff for the reactions. He got put into B and couldn't get into A for like a week. And then now he's finally getting yeah. his stride and back in S or whatever. But it was hard. To me, that's insane. Hard game. Well, he struggles at B because he can't predict what people are doing because he rules things out so quickly. But that's unrelated. 